Being a parent is the most important job you'll ever have. And so we need to think about where your infant's gonna sleep and how they're gonna do it safely. We want your baby to be safe and healthy. So these are the guidelines that we are recommending. The ABCs of safe sleep are extremely important. A is for alone, B is for back, and C is in the crib. That's important because your infant needs a safe place to sleep every time they go to sleep, nap time and night time, to keep them safe. Your infant is gonna sleep up to 17 hours a day. Not at one time, but you need to keep them safe for all of the times that they are sleeping. So a lot of people think that babies need to be really warm and bundled up. I think that's another uh, thing that's been passed down through the generations, that babies need to be all bundled up. But we've actually found that overheating is also a risk. So as parents, we seem to think all infants are cold, and they're actually not. They're comfortable in whatever you're wearing. So if you're wearing short sleeves, the infant is actually comfortable in short sleeves. You can add one layer, but it should be a wearable blanket or a long sleeve onesie so that the infant doesn't get anything up around its face. So your baby should always sleep alone. For nap time and night time, they should be in their crib or their portable crib. Being in an adult bed is an unsafe place for an infant, even if there aren't other adults in the bed. There's pillows and comforters that can get over their mouth or nose and cause suffocation. It's also very important to not let your infant sleep on a couch or a chair, as they can roll into the cushions and suffocate that way. So it's always best to put your infant in a crib or portable crib on their back for nap time and night time. Kevin, he was born May 15th of 2015. He was in the little bassinet next to me and I took him out. He wanted to be fed and I fed him and I fell asleep um, and then I woke up and he was just not breathing on my breast. Um. And I knew. Whether you're a breastfeeding or bottle feeding a baby, it's not something that you can just stop it like a job and, and go to sleep and then be refreshed in the morning. So I, th I think the early weeks are extremely tiring, which is why we usually encourage help and support in the home, either by daddy or family and friends. A parent might want to have their child sleep on their stomach because for many years that was considered uh, a safer sleep position. Uh, a lot of our parents and grandparents thought that if a baby was on their back and they spit up that they could choke. And we've now found from lots of research and data over the years that that's actually not true. So we know that it actually is very unsafe to put a baby on their stomach because it can lead to suffocation. I had just returned to work. The whole day at work I was showing her pictures to everybody Everybody, everybody was congratulating me, excited. And last time I remember thinking to myself, like I should call home and check to check home. But I'm like, no, she's asleep, she's fine, she's with her father. He was supposed to come pick me up from work. He wasn't answering the phone. And when he finally answered the phone, he was crying hysterically. And I just knew it was her. He was like, just get to the hospital. It was like a scene out of a movie. It was like I remember rushing through the doors and he was standing there rocking back and forth. The lady next to him was like, she didn't make it. And I was like, what you mean she ain't make it? As much as you want to have your baby near you and you think it's for the best, it's just so dangerous. Because as a new parent, you don't realize really how tired you are. I just really don't think we realize how serious it is because it takes a second, literally a second, for them to turn their face even in a bed. The dangers of sleeping in an adult bed um, are that most adult beds are covered with pillow top mattresses, plush blankets, uh, which are really unsafe for the infant. They can become um, entrapped in the blankets and the plush sleeping service, which can cause suffocation. Um, and so sleeping in their own crib is the best place for them. A lot of parents want to co-sleep with their baby because they feel like they're closer to them and they're able to check on them more frequently. Again, being in an adult bed without an adult caregiver is unsafe. So when you add a parent or two parents, it's definitely unsafe for that infant because when you're sleeping, you can roll over. The same is true for when you're using drugs or alcohol. If you're excessively tired, which new parents are from being up with their infant, you really can't control whether or not you roll over on that infant. So it's safest to have the baby 
baby in the room with you in its own separate sleep surface area so that you still can check on the baby and it also helps facilitate breastfeeding. Not smoking around your infant is the healthiest thing for them as well as for yourself. In tobacco smoke, there are many different chemicals which are emitted that not only you breathe in, but everybody around you breathes in. Exposure to those chemicals causes a lot of inflammation which can lead to difficulty breathing, uh, wheezing, um, many infants who are exposed to tobacco smoke often have more colds, uh, more infections than other infants. It's very tempting as a parent, if your infant falls asleep in the car seat, to bring in that infant carrier and set them on the floor and allow them to sleep there. The dangers of a baby sleeping in a car seat or a baby bouncer is that it, it causes the baby's head to, to fall forward. Infants typically don't have a whole lot of head control, uh, so when they're placed in that position, it actually makes it very difficult for them to breathe for long periods of time. So we ask that they avoid car seats and, and bouncers when sleeping. Pacifiers are actually recommended. Uh, we're not exactly sure why, but pacifiers have been shown to be a preventative. You don't have to force your child to take a pacifier, but definitely if they want to, that is considered to be a preventative measure as well. The only thing you wanna make sure is don't use the pacifiers that have the little clips and things because those could potentially get tangled around the baby's neck. So just a single pacifier by itself. Tummy time and play time uh, is important for an infant. It gives them time on their stomach. Um, it helps avoid any um, uh, what's termed plagiocephaly, uh, which is a flattening of the skull, um, and that can help um, prevent that from occurring. So awake, supervised tummy time is always encouraged. I was home with them for about the first four weeks, and my best friend um, volunteered to babysit for him because she was a stay-at-home mom. So I went back to work a little bit early. My mom was coming to pick him up as she called Nana Dates because she doesn't babysit. When I arrived, Micah had told me, make sure you go through his diaper bag. I was digging through the diaper bag, making sure we had everything in there, and there was a blood-curdling scream. And she said, called 911. When I went into the room, he was face down on the air mattress. When she flipped him over, my heart sunk because he was already turning blue. And he would shimmy on the blanket to get where he needed to go. So you'd never think that something like this would happen. From the time that I raised children, we had the wonderful little bumper pads and everything in the crib that all matched. and Bumper pads were initially designed so when crib slats were further apart and the infant's head could get caught between the crib slats. The bumper pads prevented that from happening. As they've redesigned cribs, the crib slats are no more than a soda can width apart or two and three quarter inches, so bumper pads no longer serve a purpose. Unfortunately, infants can roll up against the bumper pad and can suffocate, so let's go ahead and take those out of the crib. There wasn't a lot of scientific research when when there was a child who passed away, they just kind of categorized everything as SIDS. And really a lot of what's happening is that the grandparents have not been educated on the safe sleep and things that we have learned as time has evolved. Because such a large percentage of grandparents and family members are taking care of the children due to the cost of daycare, there really needs to be a, a good effort to make sure that those people are educated before they take care of their grandchildren. It is devastating to lose a grandchild, and I just can't imagine being the person who was caring for that grandchild in an unsafe sleep environment and the child passed. Know your ABCs. A baby should always sleep alone because that is how they are safest to sleep. When an infant is in a crib and there's other things in the crib, such as stuffed animals or blankets, those things can cover your infant's mouth or nose and cause suffocation. The infant's mattress in the crib should be firm with nothing but a tight fitting sheet over it. No loose blankets in the crib. Place your baby on its back to sleep. Your baby should sleep in a crib, portable crib, or bassinet. Safe sleep, safe babies. Safe sleep safe babies. Safe sleep, safe babies.